thank God that you've come through. I know oh. that you're you're in a little pain right now, but yes. you're you've made it, and God will take you. He's got you this Amen. far. He'll take you all the way. Do you want to say something, Key? Uh, I. It's a lot. Even my voice is affected. Um. Just trusting in God. I hold on to that scripture of Job. So you slay me yet, well, I trust you. Because I'll tell you, I have never experienced anything like this. Any move, jolts of pain, I get pain cramps. But God, that's what I speak to it. But God, now I can speak in tongues. <sighs> I will speak in tongues and go against the spirits. Uh, but by the grace of God, I'm home. I just got to work out a lot of things, like how I'm going to get off this chair for one. But uh, I'm not alone, like the song says. That really ministered to me. Glory to God. Bless you, everyone. <laughs> did, you, did you say you're at home? Did you say you're at home? Yeah, they You're discharged me. Oh my yeah. gosh. Isn't that awesome? Oh my gosh. Oh wow. So um oh, we're just gonna we're just gonna join our hearts this morning and pray for our brother. He's for those of you who don't know, Evangelist Jenny and my my and Shneek and those that maybe don't know that Keith had a, a, a major surgery yesterday and uh, it was on his spine. You know, the very delicate part of the body that carries all the nerve endings. And we prayed, we prayed that there'll be no sleight of hand, there'll be no accident. The surgeon, God will be in the in the in the operating theater, the angels will be encamped around him. And we continue to lift him up. Even God has brought him this far. God said he'll never leave you, Keith or forsake you. And uh, he'll be with you in even in the in your darkest times. I remember when I was in hospital. And uh, a, a doctor came to my bedside and said to me, um, I'm sorry, but you're not gonna make it. You're not gonna make it. That's what they said to me. You're not gonna make it. And I thought to myself, well, if I'm going home to be with the Lord, <laughs> I remember the Paul said, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. So it's a win-win situation. If, whether I live for Christ or whether I die in Christ, I still gain. Because I thought to myself, Lord, and I started to repeat the, the 23rd Psalm. I said, Lord, though I walk through the shadow of death, I will, I will not fear. I will not fear because thou art with me. As long as the Lord is with you, you will not fear. And I, that doctor tried to put fear on me. And I said, I will not fear. And... I came through, here I am. <laughs> here I am, a testimony to the glory of God. I did not, God didn't, it wasn't my time and God didn't allow the, and the, that devil, the enemy sent a, a messenger of Satan. I call it a messenger of Satan because it didn't come to bring me any positive news. It came to bring me bad news, to tell me that that's it, it's, it's game over. But I said, I will not fear. I will not allow the spirit of fear to grip me and uh i said i started to repeat the 23rd psalm and that i said lord you know i just i'm just at peace right now whether i whether i go or whether i live but i know i'm not finished here i'm not got things to do because i remember at that time i had my daughter's funeral to to uh, to <laughs> i had my daughter's funeral my but my daughter had just died and i had my daughter's funeral to organize and i said and i said god Please, I can't go, not yet, because I've got my daughter's funeral to organize. <laughs> and uh, I just said that to the Lord, and uh, the Lord knows it was more than that that I had to do. But here I am, because God has got purpose on each and every one of our lives. And uh, we will not die, but we will live and declare the glory of God, because that's what God wants. He wants us to declare his glory. And uh, so I just wanted to us to join our hearts right now because when you're in the hospital hospital and you come through surgery we have to thank god when our eyes are open because i remember um going through other uh, surgeries and then when my eyes open i'm thinking 
is it all over? Is it done? Is it, I'm still here. <laughs> so God has brought us from a mighty, mighty long way. And he said, he'll, he'll not, he'll not abort, uh, abandon us. He will not leave us or leave us comfortless or leave us astray. He will take us on a journey right through to the end. So I believe that our brother, God has been gracious. God has been faithful. God has been merciful. And there's so much uh, assignment on your life, Keith. This will be uh, the start of uh, all your other health issues coming to the surface and God healing each and every one of them. God, God can do it. I am so, so confident that the God that we serve, nothing is too hard and nothing is too difficult for him to do so we don't want to make it bigger than it is in God's eyes it's small so we're going to join our hearts and lift up our brother today because he's in a lot of pain and uh, we just want to uh, speak God's peace and God's comfort and God's speedy recovery to him so let's just unmute if we can and uh, let's come into agreement uh, you know when one hurts we all hurt when one rejoice we all rejoice and that's what we do. We stand together. We stand united. We stand and uh, we are, we are going to stand and lift up Keith as he needs our, he needs God's strength right now. And God's, uh, I know God is with him, but we're just going to pray constantly that his recovery be speedy and uh, that he will bounce back. And it will be because of the mercy and the grace of God. So let us just lift him up this, this morning. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Father, we thank you for Keith right now, Lord. Father, he's he must be doing so much better than they expected because they've sent him home. He's at home in his own environment, in his own bed, in his own house. Father God, and I thank you that, Lord, that God, the surgery was successful. I thank you that you was there. You was in the in the in the um operating theater you was there with him father god you was there with the surgeon you was there when they were um taken out and putting in and everything that they needed to orchestrate father you are the one that gives man wisdom and gives man knowledge so father we thank you that today lord that our brother is alive he's well he's lord there's no there's no complications we we cancelled every complication we cancelled every everything that could have gone wrong father there was so much negative things that was spoken to tell him that there, he was at risk with this at risk with that at risk of that that could have put fear in him but father i thank you that he did not fear he's not a, um, a slave to fear father but he's a he's a he's a child of god he's a child of god and he, you, he did Lord, not fear, fear and he did not fret, thank he didn't you, worry, but he trusted. We thank you, Father Lord. He trusted Lord, in your unchanging Lord, hand. We thank you, Father Lord. And Father, I thank you for the faith that you've Father, given him, Lord. I thank you that you have blessed him, Father, and you kept him. And Father Lord, and yet Father, even through the, one, the, one of the most you, darkest Father, Lord, times in his life, Father, he said it was the worst experience that he's ever experienced. But Father, I thank you that, Lord, today, 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 Father, he will experience the best, the best time of his life, Father, because you're healing, you're anointing, your power, your ability to restore and to heal and to recover. Father, we thank you for a speedy recovery, Father God. We thank you that every nerve ending is will be healed up. Anything that's been bruised, anything that's been battered, anything that's been cut, Father, you will heal every area. Father, I thank you, Father God, that our brother, we've heard his voice. He is alive and is well, Father, nothing and no one and no demon, no principality, no power of darkness to take him out because father, father your hand is upon him your favor is upon him your grace is upon him your mercy is upon him your love is upon him your strength is upon him the blood of jesus is upon him father i saturate him now with the blood of jesus from the crown of his head down to the very sole of his feet soak him in the blood of jesus father Father, we know mind. that, God, you are that greater. You're, him, you're the greatest, you God. You're the strongest. Power. You're the biggest. The and there's nothing that can mind. come against you. There's nothing can challenge you, Father, because you do all things well. Father, I thank you so much. 
be father lord thank you so him. much lord thank you for for, for keeping him through this time keeping him bringing him home lord i pray father that lord, lord you continue to minister your lord. grace and your bring peace and your father love lord, in the name of continue to wrap him in your arms lord continue to envelope him god we come against any any side effects any thing that will come Father will come to challenge this. What you're doing, nothing and nothing can stand against him. No weapon that is formed against him will ever prosper. We cast every care, Father, onto you right now, Father. We're lifting him up before the throne of grace. Father, you told us. Father, that we should bear our, brother, our brothers and sisters, lift them up before the throne of grace, and that you that he can obtain mercy this morning. We speak mercy, we speak grace, we speak favor, we speak love, we speak strength from the Lord to his body, Father. Restore, restore, heal, heal mentally, emotionally, physically, Father, in every era, in every era, we commit into you and give him, Father God, your protection, your covering over his life today, Father, and forever in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Oh, I'm just excited about my God. Then God, then nothing my God cannot do. There's nothing he cannot do. <laughs> There's everything. And I love that song, Pete, that you played earlier. I missed some of it, but that's one of my favorite songs. Uh, so uh, just thank God for today and uh, give God thanks in all things we give God thanks and uh, we thank God for small blessings and we thank God for big mercies this is a big mercy this morning but in God's eyes God is just it's just another day for God to just put put his anointing upon our lives to continue to give us the strength that we need from when we can't when we can't when we can't, uh, haven't got any strength of our own. We don't need our strength because it said, his grace, hallelujah, his grace, not our grace, not this grace, but his grace. His grace is sufficient. You know the word sufficient means it's, it's more than enough. He's got more than enough grace to go around. There's no running out of his grace. He's not gonna say, oh, I have, I'm finished. I've run out of grace today. No, his grace is sufficient to keep us so we thank god that grace and mercy is always abounding and being multiplied to us so this morning it's uh wednesday morning and uh we're giving god thanks and uh today we've got a speaker coming uh i can't see her at the moment but as uh, she was there <laughs> and it's uh, uh evangelist jenny She's going to be coming and um, and uh, Keith just wrote in the chat that she's requested a song. So Keith, if you can just play that song right now and then I'm going to invite her to come and to minister to us straight after. God bless you all. This is a thumb size flashlight made in Germany, which can illuminate up to one. He will manifest himself. Just call him and he will answer. Um, without any further ado, I just want to say a big welcome to our sister. Her name is Jenny and she is tuning in all the way from America in the USA. And uh, she's she's one of our very own <laughs> that used to live in the UK, but she she met her Boaz in America and <laughs> she went away and got married and uh, God she's got testimony after testimony um of um what God has done for her life and uh, and she she was one that was believing for a child for many many years. I don't know how many years it was over 10 years anyway and uh imagine she works her her job is a midwife she's delivering other people's babies she could have got bitter 
she could have got jealous, she could have got envious, all these other babies that she's bringing, helping to deliver, but she didn't have her own. But you know what? Until the appointed time, uh, God gave, uh, blessed her room, opened up her room, and she gave birth to a beautiful daughter. I know that uh, this daughter is so special. I haven't met her yet, but I'm going to meet her because I believe that they're, they're planning a trip in the summer to the UK. So all of us are going to meet up. <laughs> we're all going to meet mm -hmm. up. And uh, we're, you know, we're, we're in talks right now for have, putting on a women's conference. And guess who's going to be one of the speakers? <laughs> Our beautiful Jenny. So we, we are so honoured, privileged that we know you and that you blessed us with your presence again this um, morning. And uh, and we, we honor, we take it lightly. It's a sacrifice when you're a different time zone. In America, it's, it's she hasn't even been to bed. <laughs> she hasn't even been to bed. We have been to bed and woken up. She hasn't been to bed. She stayed up to see God's face and she hears what God has to say for the platform. And, so Jenny, I just want to give you a big welcome. Thank, <laughs> you. Thank you so much. I'm humbled. I'm honored. I praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. You know, Grace, it's so strange. I was just going to say to the people that it is so true that those who wait upon the Lord, they mount up with wings as eagles. Hallelujah. It says the what? They shall walk and they shall not grow weary. They shall run and they will not faint. Because as we waited for the Lord to make a way for us by the fruit of the womb. Hallelujah. Mm. It was almost 13 years before mm. I had my child and I had to heal at and die when I was 47. And at 47, I don't know, I'm saying this to someone maybe who's never had this testimony, but I'll quickly say at 47, most women are looking forward to what they call the menopause. Hallelujah. Where they are done with child rearing, where they are done with growing. But you know what? When God causes you to grow, it is just the same way as old Sarah. When I hear the story of Sarah, and funnily enough, a lot of my friends would come and knock the door after they, I had the baby. And in a kind of funny way, they would say, is Abraham and Sarah, are they at home? <laughs> <laughs> it was the joke of 20,008. <laughs> they would come and not ask for me by my name. So I was Sarah for quite a little while. But to God be the glory. And you know, the Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. If you are waiting on God for anything, do not give up. Mm -hmm. Amen. It may look like it has passed you by. Because I remember going to the front. Every time a preacher man came and he would say, if you are waiting on God for the fruit of the womb, I would go forward. But after 45, I was not going for myself. I was going for women who I felt like I did not want anyone called a child of God to go through what I had gone through. So I was going there and I would say, Father, I'm here, not necessarily for myself, but for every other woman that's coming behind me that may have to wait as long as I waited. And I would say, Father, just for that sake, give me many babies so that I can distribute them. I will carry the babies from this blessing. And as I lay hands on people, they shall receive their babies. And I say to God be the glory because at work now, anyone who wants the baby, they say, go to Jenny. She will pray for <laughs> you. You got the anointing for that, for babies. <laughs> go to Jenny, she will pray for you. And sure enough, whether they are believers or not, God blesses them. And then they come and say, what kind of God is it that you say? And it gives us that chance to tell them about the loving kindness of our God. 
Amen. Who is faithful day in and day out. Hallelujah. You know, Brother Keith, God bless you. God bless you. He is Jehovah Rapha, our healer. You know, as we were talking about you this morning, this is what I heard the Lord saying. And you were speaking to me in the one of the latest songs. I'm sure you all know it. He says, uh, he's the alpha, he's the omega. He writes my story. God is writing your story in our eyes. And Amen. we see the completeness, precept upon precept, surgery after surgery, God is seeing you oh, through. Hallelujah. Thank if you, If the enemy had his way over your life, he would have taken you out on the mm -hmm. first surgery. But mm -hmm. now you need to stand strong and tell him that you did not get me and you are not going to get me. For the mm -hmm. Lord my Amen. He is my healer and he will see me through. As Amen. Grace was saying, you may look like you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, but fear no evil for the Lord is with you. Amen. His Lord Amen. Is Amen. Hallelujah. Feel the embrace of the Lord even now. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that not by might nor power, but by the working of the Spirit of God. Yes. And the Spirit of God is at work in your Amen. life. Every, limb, every part they shall Amen. touch. Amen. Not the hand of man that shall touch you, but mm. it's the hand of God. We shall stand and we shall <laughs> say we were there. Mm. God manifested his power. Yes. God is Witnesses. in the life of Brother Keith. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. Ah, what a pleasure. We mm. are that cloud of witnesses. <laughs> A great cloud Amen. of witnesses. We are here. Yeah. Hallelujah. That we shall stand and say that man is not lying, but he is telling the truth because we were there. Hallelujah. Amen. And Amen. Amen. On the platform, I want you to just thank God, lift up your hands to oh, Him, Hallelujah. and say, Father, thank, thank you for you. keeping thank me you. to be a witness. Thank and you, with this, as I see this, I shall be a witness thank of you. your goodness and thank your mercy, you, of your love and goodness, of your mercy, of your youth, of your witness, of your faithfulness that will never come to an end. Hallelujah. We have been watching the Lord. I'm a witness of the Thank you, Lord. I'm a witness to the miraculous healing that I might have witnessed to the wonders of your quality. I'm a witness, Lord. I'm a witness to the hand of your mercy and your power. I'm a witness, Lord. I'm a witness, Lord. I'm a witness, Lord. I'm a witness, Lord. I'm a witness to God, I'm a witness to the glory of God, to the lifting of God. But God, no matter what the case, God, that we soak him in the blood of Jesus right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we say by your stripes, he is healed. By those stripes, he is healed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now he's healed. 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 Away this yes, morning. yes, yes Lord, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, Father, we thank you, 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 we give you this morning. I feel the presence of God. Amen. Amen. The presence of the Lord. And if you are there and you have any sickness upon your body, put your hand upon your hand. Or if you are believing for someone like I did, I believe for somebody this healing this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. How may the Lord touch your mother? Even as he touched the 
Pastor Chris's mm. mom. May he touch your mom mm. wherever she is. Mm. May he touch your mom. Mm. May he touch your mom. Mm. Mm. May he drive us where is okay. Mm. Mm. On the arm of the Lord is not too short. That he can touch anyone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we speak healing to the lesser spirits. We speak healing to wounds. We speak healing to the
Yeah. And I'll be working from the rising of the sun. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, no matter what stands in the way. Oh, hallelujah. 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 As they persecute us, Father, for your sake. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Father, your strength is made perfect in our weakness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, You kept us, Father Lord, from this place. And we thank you, Lord. Passion, your compassion that you kept us. Thank you for the years. And we glorify you. In the thank name of Christ, my Lord. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Father. Oh, thank you, God. Thank, thank you for your healing, Lord. Thank you for your Amen. healing. Thank you, Lord. Brother, Brother Keith, your next to your computer, Brother Keith, I sent you a song to play for us. I feel okay. strong. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is here. Dare to believe him this morning. How God has uh, worked on our meeting tonight. I don't know how it will end up, but I know that faith like a mustard seed is going to move mountains this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Brother Keith. And I know that the Lord's hand is upon you. Anyone else on the platform, believe in God for that miracle, for that impossibility. He is here right now. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Today, the Lord changed my message. I thought I was all packed up and ready with your message since last week. And this morning, the Lord wants me to talk about something that he calls prosperity and greatness in him. Prosperity and greatness in the Lord. And uh, just before I go into the word, you know, the Bible says in the book of uh, John, I believe it's Second John. Let me quickly pull it up. It's 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. It says, Dear friends, I pray that you may enjoy good health. I pray that you may enjoy, this is God's desire, that we may enjoy good health. And good health does not just stop on the physical body. As a nurse, I've realized that health has nothing to do with just the healthiness of the body. 
but it means health in our mind, health in our emotions, health in our hearts, health in our blood system, health in our families. He wants good health for us, meaning he wants our inside, like the man was singing, that he can see God bringing a blessing in the inside. He's working in the inside as well as working in the outside. Amen. Amen. God just doesn't want us to look cute on our faces. After we put makeup, we look good, pretty good. Uh, most people say, well, you look really nice today. God wants us to look good inside and outside. Amen, amen. Yes, it just does not, like, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the prophet Samuel, when he went to Jesse's house and the father had brought all his handsome sons, what he considered good looking or what he considered kingly looking, royalty looking. And until the prophet said, are you sure these are all your sons? Have you brought everybody? Then the father said, oh, there's another one at the back of nowhere. He tends to tend after my sheep, meaning he's really the least of the least. Yes, yes. <laughs> And people may look at you as the least of the least, but God is looking at you with a different eye. He is saying that no man cannot see in you. Hallelujah. And I just want you to know that God is saying that he wants us to be in good health and that we may prosper, be in health, even as our souls prosper. And our soul meaning our emotions, our minds, our body. So God wants the whole of us to be healthy. And I thank God that we started by believing and trusting him to touch every area of our lives to be healthy. The other thing is, you know, I was, when God gave me this scripture, I started laughing because I, I remembered our brother, uh, Matthew 6, 33. <laughs> yes. Brother Junior. <laughs> I'll call you Brother Matthew 6, verse 33. Hallelujah. Listen. Come on. Come on. I need to change my name now. <laughs> you don't have a name anymore. Your name is Matthew 6. Amen. Verse I accept it. I accept it. <laughs> He says, but you seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. Mm -hmm. And all the other things will be added unto you. Thank you and God was just ministering to me concerning this scripture. That you know, yes. there are certain things. After we have sought the kingdom of God, we don't need to pray about anymore. And I was asking God, why is this that I have this scripture this morning? He said, because the people on the platform of impact are people who are seeking the kingdom of God and its righteousness, even before their day begins. And the psalmist says that, Father, early in the morning, will I rise up and praise your name? Amen. And he says, as we rise up and we come Thank to the Lord. platform, Thank you, Lord. and we stand in agreement, Thank seeking you. him before we even attend to every other situation, taking our children to school, going to work, the things we do on a day-to-day -day basis, our priority is seeking him. Mm -hmm. and amen, time, amen. Everybody wow. is getting up, coming to the platform. He said, this is so key. God is a God of principle. The Bible says that what? He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. What he says he will do, he will do. He is not going to come tomorrow and say, well, I looked and I saw that it was going to rain. So I decided that I'm not going to do this today. He's not like you and me who wake up and we say, well, I said I'll meet you at three o'clock. But when I woke up, this happened and that happened. No, God is the same. He is unchanging. Unchangeable. Hallelujah. He is unchangeable. He will, <laughs> you will find him the same way you left him yesterday. And yes. he said that we should seek first his kingdom. Mm. It is a principle. And it's right, it's a righteousness. 
and everything else will be added unto us. And as I was sitting there, I was thinking, what did I do when I was waiting for that child? I kept seeking God. I kept going to church. I, I did not throw in the towel. Amen. I did not give up. I'm speaking to someone because this is not part of my message. Amen. I did not give up. I kept getting up Sunday in, Sunday out. And guess what? The opening prayer of our services at Christ Oasis Ministry is it has been my ministry for the past 24 years since I landed in this country. And whether I was feeling like a mom or feeling like not a mom or feeling left out, when I picked that mic to lead people in prayer, to come into the presence of God, God just gave me the ability. My situation became nothing before me. Amen. God became the center of everything. And today I am saying, no matter what it is that you are going through, as you come and you seek him and his righteousness, his kingdom and its righteousness, expect Amen. all those things to be added unto you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Expect those things. Why am I saying right. this? Let's look at the story of Hannah. This is not my message, but listen anyway, because it is the word coming to me. Hannah, year in, year out, child or no child, Penina laughing, carrying her 12 children, some on her leg, some on her back, some on her neck, like an African woman. And we, we, we cycle with one at the front, one at the back, two on the side, and we keep going. She was like that, and she was going to church. Penina was going with her five, six children, and Hannah, year in, year out. She went with her husband with no child. But we know that there came a day. There came a day. Mm -hmm. If you are there, say there shall be a day. There shall there be shall a day. Be a day. That day, that day is, is coming. coming. <laughs> Amen. Brother Keith, there shall be a day. A day. Yes, there that shall day be coming. a day when that pain is going to leave you totally. Yes. Amen. There shall be a day when you shall stand before many and tell them that I was once on Impact Ministries platform mm -hmm. and I was there and I remained faithful, playing the music, doing whatever I could, even in those pains yes. I pushed through. You will push through troops, you scale over walls and Amen. on the other side, you are going to have your testimony. Amen. The Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. And I am here to encourage someone this devotion this morning that yes, they may be persecuting you, speaking what they want to say, accusing you in every way possible. But the day is coming. Mm. That day is, that is, day is coming. Day. Amen. The day is coming. The day of your breakthrough is on its way. And it's only in the hands of Almighty. God. Keep your eyes on him. Thank you, God. Thank you. Keep all your eyes on him. Don't look to the left nor to the right because it will distract you. That's why the Bible says that look to Jesus, mm -hmm. the author and the finisher Lord, of your faith. Lord, the author, Lord, the finisher of my faith. Yes, he Thank said you, that those who looked at that serpent in the desert, even when the snakes beat them, they never died. Because they were looking at the great King of Kings. And Hallelujah. The Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. There is a way to greatness. There's a way to prosperity. And that way is the way we want to practically learn today. And when I was being taught these scriptures, I was thinking, God, so this is how things are supposed to be done. He said, my children, we suffer because of lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. But every knowledge is in the great book. Everything we need for godliness and for everything that pertains to life is in his holy word. And today I want us to go to the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 6. And Sister Grace, are you ready? Yep. Yes, good. Uh, Proverbs chapter 6 you can read start from verse 6 please 6 to 11 
I know I sent you five. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm reading from the Amplified. And it says Proverbs chapter six, verse, sorry, Proverbs chapter six, from verse six, is that correct? Yes, yeah, six to 11. Okay. It says, go to the ant, O lazy one, observe her ways and be wise, which have no chief, no overseer and no ruler. She prepares her food in the summer and brings in her provisions of food for the winter in the harvest. How long will you lie down, O oh lazy one? When will you arise from your sleep and learn to be self-disciplined? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of your hands, to lie down and rest, so your poverty will come like an approaching prowler who walks slowly but surely, and your need will come like the armed man making you helpless. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of us are like, what is this all about? <laughs> Talking what about is this all about. The Lord is saying to us this morning that we should consider the ways of the ant. And for me, who grew up in Africa, it's very easy. I pray that some of you also grew up in Jamaica or at least heard the stories of Jamaica because they are very similar to my experience. When you see an ant in the summertime, as small as the ant is, it goes to collect food. This is the, what the Bible is saying. He's saying, look at the life of an ant. And this is something we can even Google. When you go to Google, it talks about an ant, how he lives in a place where there is no boss, there is no parent that we can see. Maybe they have some in those places where they live. But basically, there is no lord over the ant telling the ant, get up now. It's time to get up and go and do this, go and do that. The Bible is saying that the ant has got to a place as small as he is. He knows to get up, go and get food. And not only food for the day, but food for when the weather gets very bad. Yes. When the weather becomes cold, when the weather gets windy, look at how small an ant is. And he knows that in windy weather, it cannot come up because the wind will just push it out of the way. And God is saying to you and I, consider the ways of an ant. He doesn't have anyone who tells him what to do or what time to get up. Hallelujah. Amen. But he has the discipline. God is saying that for some of us, our issue is nothing else but lack of discipline. Yes. And he was talking to me. I'm one of them. Discipline financially discipline with the things that are expected of me. And that's why uh, in, in, in the Amplified, they use language that is so easy for you and I to understand. They say, you lazy one. Yeah, you lazy one. Yeah. You sluggard. <laughs> you lazy. <laughs> lazy one. God is calling us to come out of the place of laziness. Amen. And the place of pla laziness is calling us out of is the place where you know you're supposed to do something, but you just won't do it. I don't feel like doing it. We have to get to a place where we are disciplined. When it is time to clean up, you clean up. When it is time to brush your teeth, you brush your teeth. When it is time to do whatever it is you're supposed to do concerning your children, concerning your family, you are supposed to do it instead of saying, well, there's nobody who is telling me, if I don't do it, nobody's coming to shout at me. Nobody's coming to tell me anything. God is calling us to a place called discipline. Amen, amen. His disciples had to be disciplined. And being a disciple means that you, you have to put away certain selfishness. You have to put it away. As a mother, you have to put it away. As a grandmother, you have to put it away. 
Because sometimes you get up and you think, oh, I could have preferred to stay in bed. That's where discipline comes. Why? Because you want to make yourself a way of success. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about something that is very easy. It is called shopping. This devotion is very personal today. We get our money instead of doing a nice budget and deciding that this money I'm going to save, this money is for my tithe or my offering or for blessing somebody. We don't do anything. We just take the money, go and spend it anyhow. The Bible is saying that if you are going to find a way of being successful, you have to discipline your shopping. You have to discipline your expenses. You have to, 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 to do a budget and really put your mind into saying, is this thing really necessary? I am preaching to you, but I know that God also sent this word for me. Amen. Because most of us, oh, we see certain things and we say, well, I got to get it. So I'm getting it. But God is speaking to us today, husbands and wives, fathers and mothers, that the ant gets up. He knows that winter is going to come. It's going to get cold and he's not going to be able to go out and get food. So he puts it down. What God is saying is saying that we must save for a rainy day. Amen. We must put money. I don't know who I'm talking to because the message I had was a different message. But God told me this is the message I am sending to my people. And it's not necessarily just because you are lazy. Some of us work so hard, but we just don't know how to manage money. And mm -hmm. he's saying that find yourself someone who can help you to have a budget so that you can put money aside. Why, are the, why is the Lord saying this to us? Because the Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Mm -hmm. Yes. Times are gone when our unbelieving parents died and left us nothing. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that they were the daughters of uh, Zelophehad in the book of uh, Numbers. I believe it's Numbers 17 there. And it says that their father died and he died a very rich man. But in those days, the girls were not allowed to get any inheritance. Mm -hmm. So every inheritance was to go to the boys. If you were not a male, you were not going to get anything. But the Bible says that these children finally realized that, you know, we are still our father's children. We have the same right as the boys to also enjoy what our father lives. Yeah. And I'm saying fathers with daughters, fathers with female children, mothers with female children, keep your stuff well so that your children can come and say, wow, my mom left me this. Yes. God is calling us on impact uh, this morning to live an impact. Let us live impactful lives. Let us be a people that are like the like Zelophehad, who left an inheritance for his children. And not only that, he educated his children to be able to value him as a father to a point where after he had died, these children said, we are going to Moses. That law of no inheritance for girls must go by the wayside. Because just because our father had no son, it does not mean we shouldn't get anything. So what am I saying? I am saying to us that God is speaking to us clearly today. That don't be lazy in educating your children, giving them wisdom, boys or girls so that they may have that value, that they can go around and say, I got this from my father, I got this from my mother, and I hold on, I keep on unto it. Hallelujah. He is mm -hmm. calling you and I to be impactful people. He is calling you and I to stop being uh, just, what are they called? In, in Africa, they call them mumus. 
you just go around quiet. You're supposed to be in, giving words of wisdom to your children so that when you are not there, the Bible says, bring them up in the fear of the Lord so that when you are not there, not there yes. apart from the way of the Lord. Amen, that's true. So today, my message to us is that let's come off laziness or saying, you know, because I am not the dad, I'm not going to teach. No, Moses was not taught in the, in the house of Pharaoh by a man. He was taught of the ways of Israel by a woman. There is neither male nor female, neither Jew nor Gentile in the kingdom of God. God wants all of us to be witnesses of his goodness and his mercy. So if we are going to see prosperity moving from our generation to the next generation, we need to be passing the nuggets of wisdom, mm -hmm. financial wisdom, That's right. emotional wisdom, teaching our children that you cannot be a punching bag for anybody and you think that that is being Christian. So the end, going back to the end, he, he doesn't have anyone, the Bible says that, who tells him that it is time to get up or now it's summer. You need to be doing this. You need to, to be doing that. Bible is calling us. The word of God is calling us. The Lord himself, who is the word, is calling us to numbering our days. Mm -hmm. We must number our days and put a purpose to yourself and to myself. If I will leave no money, I will leave some wisdom. I will leave words of knowledge. I will leave a word of scripture to my children. Timothy was said to have been influenced by his mother and his grandmother. We can also influence our generation. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are ambassadors for God Almighty. And we want to demonstrate prosperity at every level of our lives. We want to lead lives of greatness. After I read this, I realized, wow, so the ant knows. The ant knows that he is so small. So when it is, uh, what is it called? When it is uh, a season where he knows he cannot go out because it's windy. The wind will just sweep him away. He puts things away, put them under the soil, in a hole somewhere, so that when it's dangerous out there, he does not go out. God is calling us as Christians to be wise. Even as the word of God says that we should be what? Wise as what? As serpents. Mm -hmm. Do I have Bible scholar? Come on. We should be wise as serpents and we should be as peaceful as doves. Mm -hmm. And today, God is saying, just like the ant, it looks very insignificant. It looks like this because it's a small little insect. Nobody cares about it. It says, it says, go to the ant, you, you lazy one. Consider the ways of the ant and be wise. Yes, be wise. Mm -hmm. The ant is no captain. It is no overseer or ruler, but it provides a supplies in the summer and gathers a food in the harvest. When you get a lot of money, that is no time now to go and say, where, which shop shall I go to? You go and buy things that you do not need to buy. We are supposed to walk in wisdom mm -hmm. so that if there comes then a need in our midst, you can say, oh, Lord, thank you. Because yeah. you provided for me and I kept that little bit of money. Now I can bless my brother. Now I can bless the work of God. You see, one thing I've noticed about the gospel is that not all of us are able to travel. Some are afraid of flying. Some because we don't get time off work. But your money will go a long way. There's Western Union. You put it in an envelope and say, bless that man of God, that woman of God, so that the gospel can continue. 
and by that you are sowing seed for your children's children. Mm, hallelujah. Thank hallelujah. You. So what, what, what is God saying to us is that we should not be so myopic. We should not just have a sight that sees for today. We should see about tomorrow. So if you have got, God was telling me, Jenny, you see, when you get extra money, what do you do? I start thinking, oh, should I go and buy another wig? <laughs> Hallelujah. Is there anyone there who... who, who yes, who we're here, we're here, we're here. <laughs> God is calling us to a place of wisdom because we are seeking first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and everything will be added. If you want God to add things to you, you need to find ways of being a blessing. You need to be a blessing not only to your family, a blessing to people around you. Because when you got that thing, you knew that there shall come a day when I shall need to be a blessing to someone. And yeah. to, you will give with so much pleasure because you know, you know that God has blessed you and he made a way for you. Where you know where. Hey, yes. Amen. Yes, how long will you slumber or slugger? The other thing is for some of us, we just don't want to get up and go and do anything. But God, God is saying, get up like the ant. Put your hands on the plow and do something. And just don't sit there. He said, a little sleep, a little slumber. A little folding of the hands to sleep again. So shall your poverty come on you like a prowler. What is God saying? He's saying, you know your talents. You know your talents. You know, the one thing I was sitting here thinking, Grace, is about you. That you, you, you do a lot of things. When I got there and I saw that place at the back there, I was like, Lord, this is so beautiful. So beautiful. What God is saying is that with the little he has given us, even the little body that the ant has, He's not as big as an elephant, but you see him rolling hay or whatever it is, little balls and putting them away. God is just wanting you to do it at yes. your level. At your level. Do whatever you can at your yes. level. Do I can, yes. I, I have a message for somebody. Yes. Don't sit back, don't fold your hands. Even if you have to put away something like 10 cents a day, do it. It's not just about money. Even if you have to sit your grandson and talk to him about Christ for five minutes. You mm. see, the impact we make is so great because these young ones are relying on us. So what God is saying to us today is consider the ways of the ant. The ant, nobody even sees the ant. You can just walk on it and kill it right away. So small. People may consider you small. They may consider you unimportant. But if God has given you the keeping of a young person, take a few minutes and sow into their lives and put something into their lives. Hallelujah. Amen. The things of the Lord in our children, in our children's children, in our children's friends, so that when they go, they will say, oh, but Tehillah's mom says God is first. Even that, some of them don't hear that in their homes. I'm speaking to ministers today. It's not just about me. It's not just about those of us who stand in the pulpit. The ability to minister is being given to all of us. The potential to cause somebody's life to be changed is within us because God has created us all in his image and in his own likeness. I've come to encourage you that don't look down on yourself. Don't allow people to push you back because they don't respect you or they don't look at you because there shall come a day. There shall come a day when Samuel will come and say, where is he that you did not bring forward? Because God will have worked within you and outside you and perfected which that which concerns you grace will go to the next scripture which is 
um, Ecclesiastes? Yes, Ecclesiastes um, chapter 10, verse 10 to 11. No, oh, no, chapter 9, please, sorry. But the um, same verses. Chapter um, 9, 10 to 11. Oh, chapter 9, okay. Okay. And it says, Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. For there is no activity or planning or knowledge or wisdom. Um, and neither world, the place of the dead where you are going. Again, saw under the sun that the race is not for the swift and the battle is not to the strong. And neither is bread to the wise, nor riches to those of intelligence or understanding, nor favor to men of ability, but time and chance overtake them all. Hallelujah. 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 You see, the tendency for us as human beings is to look at our neighbor. And you say, hey, last year my neighbor bought a car. And now this year the wife has a new car. Oh, they have fine clothes and they do this. God is saying time, time and chance is open to everyone. It rains over the poor, it rains over the rich. And there is a place again, maybe I should have called this message one day. There is a one day that shall come for you. Where you will see that whatever chances that looked like were happening to those who are your neighbors or even your sisters, your members of the, your family seem to be doing better than you. God has not forgotten you. Mm -hmm. He has not forgotten you. Why mm -hmm. am I encouraged that God has not forgotten me? And what kept me thinking that even if I don't have a child, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. Because every one of us under the face of the earth is a potential candidate for a breakthrough. Yeah. As long as you are alive, True. as long as you are still here on earth, nobody can take away your chance of a visitation from God. I spoke to you about Hannah. You see, Penina was looking at her thinking, this one, now I have my 15 kids and she's still here. <laughs> Until Penina woke up one day and saw Hannah getting wider and wider, bigger and bigger. <laughs> because she had a one day. And I'm here to encourage you that time and chance happens to all. And remember, the Bible is so clear this morning. It's saying that the race is not for the swift. <laughs> you have, have you ever seen people running? Yeah. <laughs> I love the Olympics. <laughs> when they are running, you, you you know when they are doing what the 800 meters. They have to go around the field four times to do the 800. You see the person who starts with them after the first round, they fall and they are sitting down. I say, "Huh?" Because sometimes <laughs> they 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 are like an arrow when they leave. The way they run, you think nobody's going to catch them. But the speed finally starts going down. Down, you realize some of them they they, they even slow down to to almost they look like they are walking, <laughs> and the people that they had left in the first round come and pass them while they are still going slowly. So you tell yourself today that I may not look like I achieved much when I was thirty or forty, but. You never know. You might even finish the race before then. Amen. It's nothing to do. It's about the energy. It's about who's backing you. We are being backed by superpower. Amen. We are being backed by heaven. Yeah. We are being backed by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We are being backed by him who is able to quicken your mortal body. Hallelujah. Yeah. He is able to quicken 
every part of you. Yeah, you may have been told you have this disease and that disease, but who knows? The Lord is still God. He's still sitting on his throne. And be fully persuaded that he who began a good work in you, he is faithful to complete it. Don't be the one that completes something that you didn't start. You did not give yourself the life that you have. You have no reason to slow yourself down. And the Bible is saying to us here in Ecclesiastes that whatever you do, do it well. For when you go to the grave, you see, when you die, there will be no work. After you are dead, there's no planning or knowledge or wisdom. You are dead anyway. But he said, he has observed something under the sun. He said, the fastest runner does not always win the race. And you, you all people, you, you would support me in that. That we have seen many races. When they say, look at that Kenyan man. He has gone and they, they are running, they are running. Before you know it, the Kenyan man is sat down. Because he <laughs> ran out of fuel. He ran out of speed. <laughs> yeah. He has run out of speed. Uh, uh, steam. <laughs> so what God is telling us is that keep on the straight and narrow. Mm. Give it your best. Don't try to run like somebody who runs a hundred meter dash. When you know you only run marathons. <laughs> keep your speed of the marathon runner so that you finish your race. Because if you try to do a Carl Lewis who used to run, what, 200 meter dash. By the time you get to the 200, you have finished the energy that God has put in you for you to finish your race. So what God is saying is that focus on yourself, trust in God, do the best you can at whatever God has committed to you. Yes, Lord, speed that down. Thank you. And that's why, you see, our assignments are as different as we look. Our assignments are as different as we look. Which means that there is something God has put in me for me to do certain things. It does not make me less than less of a woman to a woman that has also been given an assignment under God. So today I'm saying, let us know that the hand of God is upon each and every one of us to fully take us to a place where we are supposed to be because he is the perfecter, hallelujah. He is able to perfect you and I. He said the fastest runner does not always win the race and the strongest warrior, hey, the strongest warrior doesn't always win the battle. Mm -hmm. How many times did we see Frank Bruno? For those of <laughs> you who were there when I was in London there, Frank Bruno was a heavyweight champion. And many came from America. And Frank Bruno would just give them one on the jaw and they are down. <laughs> the best and the strongest, they looked strong, but they hit on the wrong place. And God is just saying to you and I, that let us apply wisdom to our lives. Let us apply wisdom and all our commitment to the things that we do as children of God. Hallelujah. Oh, it's too late. I'm going to my last scripture, Sister Grace. Okay. Uh, you got it? Yeah, is it um First Thessalonians? Chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 11? Yes. Okay. And it says, and to make it your ambition to live quietly and peacefully and to mind your own affairs. I think in the King James, it says, mind your own business. Yes, yes. <laughs> mind your own business and work with your hands just as we are directed to do Hello. so that you will behave properly towards others, exhibiting good character personal integrity and moral courage worthy of respect of the outer world and be dependent on one dependent on no one and yes. in need of nothing 
Um, well, it's saying that we're to make it our ambition. Yes. To live quietly, peaceably, to mind our own business <laughs> and to uh, work with our hands just as God has directed us to do. Hallelujah. I know that this may sound uh, very easy, but the wisdom we have comes from God. And God is saying to you and I that our focus should be on what? On ourselves. This business of waking up in the morning and you say, oh, what did the neighbors say? What did so and so do? What God is saying, focus on you yourself, being perfect, being in right standing with him, applying yourself to the things that God has called you to doing. You know, I was thinking about this scripture and I say, what would it matter if I want to go and find out what my neighbor is doing? Then I am not as disciplined as the ant, because the ant wakes up and he thinks, what's my business with my neighbor? Let me go and get stuff that is beneficial to me. Stuff that will help me to walk through every season of life. And what God is saying to us as his children is that he's giving us knowledge. While we are there asking, oh, what happened with Mrs. Henry and Mrs. Jones next door? You are wasting your time. You're involving yourself in things that are not going to benefit you. After you know that Mrs. Jones and her husband, they fought last night. What are you going to do with it? You're wasting, info, you're wasting the time God has given you where you could be achieving things that are beneficial to you. So as an encouragement to us this morning, I'm just saying the word of God is so practical. It's saying, let us focus on the things that God has assigned for us to do. Let us do the best we can in the uh, circumstances God has placed us. And let us live an inheritance. Let us live an impact in the people and in the uh, uh, circumstances or the neighborhoods God has placed us without being a, a nosy packer. Without being a nosy packer. We should just do that which is important. He's not saying we should ignore our neighbors, but what he's saying is that if it's not beneficial for us to get certain information, it's better to keep it out of our lives. Hallelujah. Ah, at this point, Father, I thank you. I give you praise. I finished with the word that the Lord gave for the platform this morning. I pray that the word will uh, take us from one place in you to the next level in you, Lord. Thank you, mighty God, for the people on the platform. And my presumption this morning is that every soul within the sound of my hear, of hearing my voice, Father, they have accepted you. And if anyone on the platform has not accepted you as Lord and Savior, Father, we pray that you convict them by your spirit and they shall speak to their leadership and come to Christ. Hallelujah. Because this that we have learned has come from your word and we know it's very practical. It's a necessity for our day-to-day -day living. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Chris, the floor is all yours. I am done unless your people have comments. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny, for that wonderful and insightful message. Um, so many um, facets to it and uh, something that we all should uh, adhere to and uh, demonstrate for our own lives. Consider the ants. <laughs> yeah, I've considered them many times in different situations. <laughs> it's a wonderful sight to behold. And, uh, you know, to God be the glory. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. So many things. Um, if anybody wants to um, pray um, or comment or or just um, ask uh, if you need prayer, please avail yourself. And, uh, you know, it's... Uh... Uh, go ahead, Junior. Bless you. Uh, just give me a second. Okay. 
getting in the um getting my trusted bank. Uh, trusted van, the man in the van, the preacher that will reach you. <laughs> uh, amen. Uh, Sister Jenny, beautiful woman. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> amen. Praise, we, we praise God. Hallelujah. Um, now, man, you have said uh, so many things, and, and irrespectfully that as well, according to our voice on. Uh, the platform before about especially what the Lord has laid on my heart and many times around leaders and I think you were mentioned at one point in the administration that especially for the leaders and uh, that is uh, beautiful in that sense that uh, can can you guys hear me? Yes. Can you guys yeah. still hear me? Yeah? Yes. Okay beautiful beautiful um, yes and, and, and I always say that and a lot of people always say well uh, according to leaders, they think always that leaders are just people who, um, who's given a title, um, as according to pastor, prophet, uh, you know, whatever they, they, they call it to be, or president or whoever, CEOs of company, but not realizing that leaders are also you as a man of your family, or, or a woman of your family, or someone who uh, people look to. Where whether you be at work and people like you said um, that people says whomever if you want a child go to Jenny you know she will pray for you that's a leader in your workplace regardless if you don't have the title as a leader but you are a leader in respect of the Lord in the ministry that the area that he put you to even if you don't have the title I'm just trying to broaden so you can see where I'm going with this and uh, you know when we look at the respect of that, the Lord has said that this year, especially going into the years coming, according to what has been exposed before and things that is starting to be exposed, that leaders are going to be under attack. And the leaders meaning not, not, not just necessary, um, like I said, with titles, but everyone who loves and gives God their lives. And, and, and as a, let's just say, a lifestyle of service to the father i want you to hear me correctly a lifestyle lifestyle of service to the father you will come under attack for some reason or another you will because the bible says every foundation shall be tested with fire but right? every foundation shall be tested with fire it shall be tested to see how good the foundation is and some somehow the lord said this year i want you to pray especially uh, for the leaders for people who stand before people, who stand in the gap for people, who intercede for people, who go out of their ways to help others, who love one another in that regard. They are, we are all leaders in that respect, right? You talk about the ants, uh, that, you know, as it says, you sluggard, con have you considered the ants? Have you consider them? How they work diligently and hard, storing up. And most of the time, especially when it comes on to leaders, we need to be very calculative. We, we, uh, calculated, I should say. We need to come to the Father first, like you said, Matthew 6, 33. Always put in the Father first, because that's the step and the way to go. The other scripture they gave me for the year is Psalm 16, 11. Thou will, thou will show us thy way, the path to life. Because in thy presence is fullness of joy, and at your right hand is pleasure forevermore. It's basically similar to Matthew 6.33 of what it is. Yes. Because if you're in the Lord's presence, if you seek his face, you come into his presence, guess what? He will then, because you're in his presence, it's like, the, it's like you going into, or, or say, for instance, you are taking a journey with the king. Or you somehow run into some situation on your journey, and somehow the king has passed and say, listen, jump in the chariot with me. And he jump, you jump in the chariot with you, all the people who are trying to get you cannot touch you. Why? Because you're traveling with the king. Why? Because you're in the possession of the king. Why? Because you're in the protection of the king. Why? Because you're in the liberty of the king. Which means they cannot touch you until you decide to come out or walk out and say, let me off out the chariot here. I'm going to thank you for dropping me. 
But staying with the king in the presence of the king will gain you so much advantage to this life. Talking about billing as according to leaving an inheritance. And the leaving an inheritance, a lot of times we think always financially only. But never see the other side of the spiritual inheritance that you need to leave as a leader, as a person who served the Lord, as a person who gives their life over to the Father. What legacy will you leave? And a lot of people, every single person, first thing they will think of is the financial contribution to yet either the retirement of life, if you know what I mean. <laughs> the retirement of life. Or, in that sense, with what legacy, according to what man could see, that we can leave. The Bible talks about we should store up treasure in heavenly places. Where no muscle rut could, could actually get to it. No thieves could break in. It means that you're storing it up not just for yourself, but yet for your children, 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 children's on. That the spiritual lifestyle, welfare, that is the most important. Because all other things shall come after. It shall meet. And even if it doesn't in that respect, God is so merciful and faithful and just to bless your generations later on. That, that, is, that is after you. I want to say, I'm not always talking about your seed only. I'm talking about people who you've implugged, implanted, lifted up, encouraged, and so on and so forth. Quick example of that. Um, there's this brother. He actually messaged me the other day. And he said to me, you have been quiet for a while. Because he has this uh, platform now that he does a podcast. You've been quiet for a while. You haven't said nothing in the group, you know, blah, 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 whatever. And I had to explain to him that, you know, life got a bit busy and blah, blah, blah. And he said, look, if there's anything you need me to pray about or with or for, um, and so on and so forth, carry on. Now, the reason I mention is, uh, no, he said, he said something along the lines of, because you've been there for me in my time of weakness, in my time of despair, in my time when I was uh, down, and so on and so forth. Uh, just, just in a summary of, of what he was going through. He didn't have his stay in the country. He was fighting to stay in this country. You know when you don't have your stay, when they revoke your visa, you, don't, you can't work. You can't work for a certain amount of hours. According to if it's just a student visa, that run out. So you have to renew almost how many years now? And it's very distressing. And often it takes a lot out of a person to actually withstand that and to overcome that. And he said, you know what? Because you have stand with me, whatever you, I will stand with you. So God has blessed him now with his stay in the United Kingdom, right? God has blessed him, right? And he says, because you've supported me, whether that be financial or was it prayer or was it just moral support or coming to see, whatever. He said, you know what? Whatever. I will stand with you. The point I'm trying to make is, if that wasn't the case that I've given my life to Christ and allow him to, for me to uh, influence or to, to, let's just say, uh, how would I put it? To bless him in that sense and build up that spiritual inheritance in him, he wouldn't have not said that to me. And I've replied to him. And it's, it's just funny how we're actually talking about this this morning. I said to him, I said, listen to me. It's great that now you are able to pour out into others because the Lord has lifted your face from the ground. He has raised your continent to him and he's made your feet strong to walk now again. So now go and strengthen the rest. Strengthen who was in the same position as you despair. The point I'm trying to make is that you always look at a, a physical point of view we, as an inheritance as money, which is great and important as well. But also look at the spiritual side, which is much more greater of an inheritance, much more greater of a, of, of a reward. Because once you do that, people will in turn bless you, will lift you up, will help you when you in need the next time. And you've mentioned also around, I mean, like I said, there's so much point, but I will pray. Because I don't want to take the whole time because I'm sure other people want to voice their uh, opinion or get prayed for as well. But there's so much rich in culture when you realize that we all are leaders in our own right. Just like you said, 
just our mission, our, our, not our mission, our purpose is different in somewhat ways, just like we look different. And I would even add, just like our fingerprints are not the same. We all have something to do that the Lord wants us to do. However similar it looks and wants to be, the Lord wants you to achieve that. The Lord wants you to be able to get gain that and have that as a uh, uh, inheritance to take with you to glory, to leave here on the earth that Junior has left this legacy of love. Just like Sherlan has left, she sent a love heart before she left, and it represented her heart. Sorry, Pastor Chris, the grace to use this, but they use it for, 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 for heart. But then, then you guys use that as a, I think it was a love heart foundation. I can't remember exactly what it was for. But love heart foundation or something like that, according to that as a charity. Look at that. Could we say that yet she was a great <laughs> prophet, evangelist, she was a great this, but the Lord had made her a minister in her own right, a leader in her section, in her field, in her generation, without a title. And that's what I'm saying this morning. You need to be able to cultivate, get deep in, stuck in, look at it out. You need to also, on the physical side, you do need to be wise in your spending. You do need to be wise in how you are going about with your finances. You do need to be wise because it's causing a lot of distress and the devil knows how to wind people up when he has very fiddle hands or very hands that is idle. He loves it. He'll always bring distraction before you. Buy this, buy that. Look, you need this, you need that. Look at this. It's a great way to bless. And the last thing I'll say before I pray that you mentioned, which I think is vital and important, and I've mentioned this a couple of times. We're not here begging people to finance the faith. We're not begging people to finance the faith. But as you said, how are we living with our lives? Gaining so much from Christ, but not even giving to the others. When we were without, someone blessed us and encouraged us with financial gifts, physical financial gifts, and helped us. But we're on this platform every single day. Feeding, but yet still, we are not blessing. We are not blessing the Impact Alive ministry. We and I'm listen. I'm not here to. The, Pastor Christian Grace has not paid me to come on here to to say we're asking for money. No, it's not that. But when you love God and you find the place that God love is, you will find it in your heart to move and bless. There's our brother Adam from Pakistan. Who's in need of things? Himself in need, but he'd rather give it to others. Are we turning to want to bless that ministry? There is a Sister Vivine who is going, she has her ministry with the young people. Are we looking to bless? I could name numerous of people that is on here that need blessings in their life according to finance. But we say we love God, but we don't show love with our resources. But yet still we say we, anyway, let, let me not go down that road. But I'm just letting you understand the gravity of loving God. You can't just love God only spiritually, but not love him physically. All right? The Bible says let's worship him in spirit and in truth. For God is a spirit, it says. And those that worship him must, must worship him in spirit and in truth. A fact. Right? So. Let, let me just pray. Otherwise, I'll carry on forever, which I don't want to do because it uh, would be selfish of me. Father, we thank you and I trust you and we bless you for what you have said, your word. And I pray, Father Lord, for the leaders, the ones that have a title on here and the ones that you, Father Lord, as, not, as, as according to, has a title, but yet they have not seen. But they, because they haven't uh, received a title, they feel in, uh, inadequate. But Father, allow us to understand that we are all leaders in our own right. And I pray, Lord, that you will, according to the ones that have title, using them as a point of contact this year, protect us all here. Protect your people. We pray, Father, Lord, for the, the pillar of fire around us to engulf our enemies, to separate them, that we will be able, Father, to continue in the stead. 
Destroy every voice, every annoying voice in our heads. That father, break the concentration. Every attacking voice of the enemy that seeks to deceive in the name of Jesus right now, put it on pause and destroy it in Jesus' name, Father. We pray, Father Lord, for your word that has come today to germinate the hearts and the lives of people, to influx over their lives. That, Father, it will uh, cause a chain reaction of reaction in the name of Jesus, that the actions that have been done will bring your name glory and that you will be satisfied according to the work of our hands. We pray, Father, as we look to the ants, as we look to the ants for wisdom, let our minds not be choked, but let, Father, ideas flow, not just for the sake of wealth, as it says, you have given us the power to create wealth, not just for the sake of wealth, Lord, but the sake of spiritual growth, spiritual inheritance, spirituality, Father, that we will grow in you so much so that the physical life around us has to, Father Lord, be dictated by your will according to prosperity of the soul. And yet, as we have, like, like our, our sister read, that, Father, we will, uh, our body will be in health as our soul prospers. That all things around us will be well in the name of Jesus because our soul prospereth. Because we look to Hallelujah. you first. Hallelujah. Because we seek you first. Because you said you will show us the path to life. Because in your presence, because we lean not on to our own understanding, but Father Lord, we acknowledge you in all our paths. Lord, be the light and the lamp unto our way. That we will be people of the light that bring light in the darkest areas. That Father will germinate hearts with love. That Father will release them in order to bless others as you have blessed them. Help us not to be, Father Lord, uh, the greedy and the lazy. Help us not to be people who hold everything in and not see the need for others and not with the eyes to bless. Father, help us to open our hands and, Father, bless you in the work of through man according to your word in man because you are the word. So, Father, as according to your promises, which are yea and amen, help us not to hold and store treasures up here on the earth for ourselves where the moth, the thieves, and all these people could break in and steal it. But, Father, utilize it for your glory. And Father Lord, that we will be able to be a great example that's been, that will leave a legacy here that people could say at our funeral on our life retirement that this was surely a man, this was surely a woman who represents God in his loving and kinding nature and compassionate nature. So Father, I leave all of us, your people, in your hands, by their faith, of how they believe, what they believe, help our own belief, that we will be able to believe in you, the hope of all glory, that Father Lord, as we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, that in due season, you will exalt us. So Father, we thank you for victory in all the areas, spiritually, physically, emotionally, financially, Father, in every area, we thank you for liberty. And we bless you in Jesus' most gracious and wonderful name we pray. Let's be in the name of the Lord forever. May his name be glorified forever in Jesus' most wonderful name. Thank you guys for listening. Bless you. Thank you, Pastor Chris. Bless you. Amen. Thank, Amen. thank you. Thank you, Junior. Bless you. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, just addressing yeah. uh, certain areas of uh, uh, yeah. Jenny's expression uh, this morning. Um, yeah. And she really spoke as an oracle of God and uh, touching so many areas in terms of uh, believing for the impossible. Um, mm. I heard that profoundly, believing for the impossible. All things are possible to them but believe. And she was uh, um, very eloquent in sharing a testimony 
of the miracle child that she received at the age of 47 years old. And, uh, you know, having said that, that remains a legacy in our workplace because why? That is part of her calling now. She is extended a calling beyond just giving birth <laughs> to a child, to um, praying um, for the needs of uh, couples, uh, women that are seemingly having difficulty, whether they're barren or not, but they're having difficult. And uh, by virtue of that, she is now bearing much fruit. And I don't mean that um, Evangelist Jenny is uh, having more babies. I'm, I'm just saying bearing fruit in terms of God confirming a word, the word through her with signs following. And so we need to know that Sometimes we go through things that God wants to sharpen us. Um, as the word of God says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord truly shall deliver us out of them all. And when we're going through things and we say, ask ourselves the question, why am I going through this? I don't deserve this. I don't deserve this. Know that God is a good God and he's a merciful God. And know that, you know, you've got to, whether it feels pleasant or not, you've got to count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, trials, tribulations, and testings, knowing this at the trying of your faith. And many times we are try tried in our faith. We're stretched on every side. The trying of your faith work with patience or perfect perseverance and a complete and uh, ultimate result of that is that you should you should grow up in Christ you should mature in Christ and um, your resolve uh, should be fortified and you have the mind of Christ the attitude of Christ that whatever happens you are here for a purpose and you're going to be faithful to that call and you're going to fulfill your destiny in spite of the opposition in spite of what you're what you might see, in spite of what you might hear, in spite of what actually is manifested in your life, God has a purpose for each and every one of you. And uh, I just love that scripture that she read when it says, beloved, uh, in uh, 3 John 2, beloved, I pray that in every way, you may succeed and prosper and be in good health physically, just as I know that your soul prospers spiritually. And uh, it's a knowing. When you know that your soul prospers spiritually, what you're relying on is not on your own wisdom, but you're relying on the wisdom of God. You're relying on the knowledge of God. You're relying on the goodness of God, the grace and the favor of God. Your soul is prospering spiritually. Your mind, your will, and your emotions. And, uh, and it, in the context of this, this is about walking in truth. Walking in the revelation of the truth of who Jesus Christ is. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No one comes to the Father except by me or through me. And so it's important to focus on the Lord in every respect. And so this, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, is talking about the truth, the revelation truth of knowing that it's not just about, as Jenny said, it's not just about money, prosper. We always think about money or material things, but it's about having the attitude of mind, having the mind of Christ that, you know what? It doesn't matter what I'm going through. I can maintain a peace in God, irrespective of my situations. In, in, irrespective of the accusations i can remain i can 
maintain a peace in God. And it's a, and it's a sense of knowing who you truly are in Christ. You rise above that. God alight, er, enables you to rise above every situation. That you can mount up your wings as e eagles. You can walk and not faint. You can run and not faint. In other words, you can have the strength even of a young person and beyond a young person because what Christ, your security, is on the inside of you and you have revelation and understanding that great is, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Be strong in the Lord, in the Lord and in the power of his might continually keep your mind focused on the things that are good, the things that are virtuous, the things that are life-giving, the things that will empower you and bring you to the next level in your spiritual walking in Christ. And don't focus on the things that are coming against you. Submit yourself under the mighty hand of God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. In other words, Come constantly under God's mission. Reset, reset, reset. When you're going off, off at a, a teen tangent and the devil seems to be buffeting you, reset and start again. Just ask God, forgive me, Lord, because I've let go of that anchor. Our anchor must be secure in Christ. Don't let it go loose. Praise be to God. Thank you. Thank you again, Jenny, for just blessing us with that. Amen. Amen. It was Amen. so rich in so many areas. And uh, I, I, I just, if anyone wants to respond to what she shared this morning, and uh, just a sense in the presence of God was, and is here this morning. And um, I just want us to be aware that every time we, we are in the presence of God because <laughs> Christ is in us. And it's not about just a feeling. It's about a knowing. The presence of God is in you. He said he never leave you nor forsake you, but he'd be with you even to the very ends of the earth. And so we should uh, rejoice because of that. Ooh, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Yes. Don't be downcast. Don't be saddened. Just put your trust in him. Put your trust in the Father. Put your trust in the Lord. Put your trust in Jesus. He's gone before, ahead of us and he's conquered that old dragon, Satan. He's under your feet. Yeah. And right now I should hear stumping yeah. on the platform. I should hear you stumping and saying, devil, Satan, yeah. you're yeah. under my yes. feet. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Just attack him with Jesus, the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name. For yes. in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, whether it be sickness, whether it be infirmity, whether it be confusion, whether it be lack, whether it be insuffi insufficiency, whatever the attack is under, is subject to the name of Jesus. It comes under the mission of Jesus Christ, our Father God, Jehovah. Yes. Yeah is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We have to keep meditating on that very word because you know, we all know that sometimes when we're going through things, it doesn't seem like God is anywhere around and you think you're standing alone. You are never alone. You are never alone. God is there and God is just waiting for you to say, I surrender. I surrender all. God wants all of you, just not a part of you. He wants the whole of you. And he wants you to wholly and completely trust in him. Amen. Bless Amen. you. Amen. Rita, 
Go ahead. I see yeah, you. I just, yeah. I just wanted to say, Jenny, I've not been well because I've got like a blood disorder and I'm, I've got a lot of health conditions. And I don't know what made me love them because I've been sort of not very well for the last couple of days. And it was just like, I thought, you know what? I want to hear the word of God. I came on this morning and I was just delayed of feeling better because, you know, I felt so poorly over the last couple of days, not being that great. So I thought, oh, do you know what? I've just got to come on and sort of pray and I just feel better. But, you know, lots of things like you've said, Jenny, that resonated with me. Like it was like, as you all know, Grace has been down. We did our trip and we did it sort of really planned that, you know, we did it on a budget and everything. We took everything up and it, we had a great time and it was like, you know, we just didn't. It. But I just wanted to say, Jenny, thank you. Every time I've come on the platform, whatever you say, it really resonates with me because you just talk a lot of sense. Because, like, I wasn't feeling good because my blood's gone down and I'm not feeling great. But, you know, I'm feeling good. Because it is actually yeah. mind over matter. Because sometimes you can say, oh, I'm not well. I can't cope. I'm not. But when you come on the platform and you said that, you went, you know, it's mind over matter. And because of you, Jenny, you've been on the platform. You've talked a lot of sense this morning. You've talked about how you can sort of plan things like finances. You've talked about lots of things and you've talked really about being like mind over matter and I just wanted to thank you from my heart Jenny because yes. you've actually made my day because I wasn't for the next last couple of weeks days I've just been not been feeling good you know not been feeling well because of my blood disorder but I'm feeling all right I'm going to get on with the rest of the day Oh, please. and thank you very much Jenny because I wasn't I've been sleeping a lot and I just thought, you know, I don't know what it was and I wasn't feeling well. I thought, oh, because I've got my friends coming over later, later you know, because I've got a lot mm. of people I know. And I was just thinking, you know, I can't get up, I can't do this, I can't do that. And it was like finances, not, I mean, I'm okay, like I do plan things, but it was like me and Grace had planned everything, you know, and somebody had said, oh, you can't take her on the bus because it's like we did everything to the minor detail that we planned everything to the point that we'd still got a bit of funds left over, you know, and it was like you're saying this and we went on the bus because Grace sort of pushed me on this bus and somebody was saying, oh, you can't push her on the bus, you know, she's you can't do that. Well, we did, we did everything you know, sort of really minutely well. And thank you, Grace, you know, she, you know, for all she did for me when she was here. And, yes. you know, it was like really well planned the whole trip from A to B. We just did everything, you know, sort of plan, planning it very wisely. And then we just did everything. And it was like, I got my house like painted and like Grace was saying, look, look at this, look at that. He hasn't done that because I'm a kind person. I don't really say much to anybody, but you know, she gave me the strength to speak up and say, well, you're actually paying for this. You know, you need to sort of say it in a nice way. I mean, the guy that's working here is actually from the church. He's a lovely person, you know, and he's nice, but I had the strength. You know, and God sort of gave me the strength to plan, he gave Grace the plan, he gave Grace the, you know, sort of strength to push me on a bus. And we just planned it and we had a wonderful few days. And uh, I wanted to thank you from the bottom of my heart, Jenny, because I've had a few bad days not feeling great because of my blood. Mm. But you've given me the spirit to get up and think, you know, it's mind over matter. Because I wasn't mm. going to come on the platform because I was sleeping a lot. My friends came in later on, you know, to see me. And I was just like, I'm looking after a little dog for her, which I do. And I'm thinking, oh, how am I going to do it? Because I'm not feeling good. But you know what? Because of you, Jenny, and you coming on the platform, every time you've come on the platform, 
you've always talked a lot of things and I just wanted to thank you personally oh, for God doing that, Jenny. You. Amen. God bless you. God Amen. Bless you. Thank Amen. You. Thank you, um, Rita, for sharing um, your testimony, in effect. And uh, if I could just correct you, it's not mind over matter, but it might even be better if you said the mind of Christ over every situation. And we have the mind of Christ. I actually we agree with what you're saying. Yeah. Mind over God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, we can yeah. always empower the mind, but we know it's only by the grace of God. Um, praise be to God. So bless you. Um, I know, Fiona, you had your hand up. And um, I don't know if you're in a position to talk. But Hello. It's because um, sometimes I'm going through um, certain areas and it stops the uh, reception and then yeah. when I come on I, I don't realize I'm, my hands is not up but um um sorry um just it was wonderful to hear your um what you share um, evangelist Jenny and and also um just for Rita maybe it would be great to say God over matter because um it's easier to come to mind that it's God over how we feel God over how we think and so on you know you said um, matter over God but God over matters what I think you were referring to um when you said it uh, and and it is it's mindsets it's how when we hear the word it goes in and then it it, it um it changes our hearts it changes our emotions it changes our feelings that's the power of the word um but what I wanted to share um evangelist Jenny was that I have a friend and um, she has been believing God for a child for a long time, for children. Mm. And she said that God gave her a word. And your testimony of what you were, what God has done for you and how God did it. And the fact that you, would you say that you continued doing, just going, because you said there was a part in the, in what you shared that you said, um, you didn't even pay attention to it, uh, what was happening at times. You actually just carried on ministering to other people, which couldn't have been easy, but the spirit of God within your heart it just helped you. Um, and I was thinking about my friend, and I know the children haven't come that she's spoken about, but I just wanted to continue to lift her. They haven't come as yet. Yes. And I don't know if that's her, still her dream, but she spoke about it maybe 10 years ago. And I don't think she's, uh, you know, she's my age. So I believe I'm, I'm standing in the gap as well with her or standing in agreement with her that yeah. children, can, you shared. I don't know anybody at 47 that's had a baby. I don't know that. That's God. So he's yeah. able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can ask. Yes. And yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. Uh, I think we might have uh, lost Fiona uh, temporarily as uh, she's gone through one of those zones, but uh, we get the essence of what it she's saying. To God with other people. Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah, yeah. She's a wonderful woman of God who is doing other things. Her mind is on other people now, other women, empowering other women, helping them to understand how to, um, to make time for themselves, to give God, you know, do what they're doing with God, but also remember that they are vessels of honor and that the Holy Spirit is living in them. So I just wanted to lift her in prayer, please. Um, for, you know, the gift of her womb opening in Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Jenny, um, are you going to pray? I believe um, Fiona's uh, asking if you can pray for a friend. Yeah, I was. Sorry, I was. Yes, yeah. yes. Let us, let us pray. Father, tonight, this morning, we thank you. 
We give you praise because you rule and you reign over all things. You yes. reign supreme mighty God. And the word of God, which is our life and our bread, tells us that you are the potter and we are the clay. Father, for every one of us believing for one thing or the other, especially my sister Fiona's friend, who is trusting mighty God that children are an inheritance from you. They're a heritage Amen. from your hand. Amen. Mighty Hallelujah. God, meet her at the point of need. In the name of Jesus Christ, as you did it for me, Lord. Father, it's not a story someone told me, but I walked it with you. And you sustained and kept me. Father, I'm no better than anyone else. I implore and I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that your hand that is not too short will be extended over Fiona's friend, Lord. And Father, that a year by this time we will hear a testimony that you, God, who is master over the impossible, with you all things yes. are possible. Father, you said faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hallelujah. The of things that are not yet Hallelujah. Seen. Father, we stand in faith. And you said faith, nothing else but faith pleases you. Father, today on this platform, we hold hands and we believe for our sister that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above that which we can think of or even imagine. You said it is according to the power of God that is at work within us. And we pray, Lord, that you quicken your body Quicken every area of your life. Let the enzymes, let the cells, let the body respond to being a mother in the name of Jesus. And Lord, all the glory will be given unto you. And Lord, Amen. for every other trust, every other hope, everything that the enemy has made us believe is impossible, we cast it away. And we look up unto you, the author and the finisher and of the our finisher. life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Oh, Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you. So be it. It is yes. in, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Amen. We bless your holy name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Fiona. Bless you, um, Jenny. Um, if there's anybody else that needs, um, wants to comment or even ask for prayer or wants even to pray, um, um, go ahead, please. Father, Father Chris, sorry, I forgot to um, uh, ask Sister Jenny in the, in the chat, in a uh, messenger. I'm um, going to ask Sister Jenny to uh, pray on. I forgot to show you the, the plans for the, the, the leaders who are planning. Uh, well, actually, all leaders are planning, but yeah, to basically commit all the leaders' plans that they have um, to move forward in the Father according to um, the business of the kingdom. Yes. Um, I'm, just in, I'm just in the message. Okay. You, 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 yeah, sorry. It's only because I've forgotten, um, obviously, outside. I don't want to get the noise on that. So I don't know if you could read that and pray into that for us, please. Um, because even my own church i think this morning on the early morning prayer um i think we're looking for a bigger place and um so basically there's a plan to extend uh from where we are to another place as well um so yeah so all if all the if we could pray for all the leaders plans and i think brother adam has i think i saw a flyer with you on there as well that uh, you've been ministering in pakistan um all the plans that he has most of them has gone well so far we thank god uh, but just pray for the work of uh, his hands and the planning team. And anyway, but you, you get the drift. Sorry, I, yeah. it's a bit louder in the background. All right, I'll be listening, but I'll be praying as well. So I'm, I'm going to mute now. Hallelujah. Yes. Go, go ahead, Jenny. Okay. So, Father, again, we stand before you, Lord. We thank you, mighty God, because you said, if two shall touch upon anything here on earth, mighty God, and we agree on it, oh God, you said it shall be done by you, our Father in heaven. And Lord, I thank you that there is more than two of us on the platform, Lord. 
You said two shall put, you said one shall put what? A thousand asunder and two, ten thousand. Lord, this morning, we hold hands one more time, Lord, from the different areas of this earth that belongeth unto you. And we call upon you as God supreme, as overall ruler of all rulers. And Father, concerning your church, you said you build your church, the gates of hell will not prevail against your church. This morning we lift up, oh God, all pastors, all apostles, all teachers, all prophets, all evangelists, all workers in the house of God, mighty God, that you exchange, extend your hand of power upon them, and Lord, that you will release the grace to do the work of the kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ. We lift up all men of God, all women of God, all kinds of ministries. We subject them to the power from on high in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, that they shall be faithful stewards of the work that you have given them. Even as you have said, Lord, that we should apply all wisdom, that we should apply all our strength in everything that we get our hands to doing. And we pray in the name of Jesus that the focus of the men and the women, the workers in your vineyard, will be you, the author and the finisher of our faith. Father, visit every ministry, no matter how big, no matter how small. Father, at their level, meet them at their point of need. May they experience the mighty hand of God throughout the nations, we pray. Father, move in England. Father, move in the United States in the islands of God. More mighty God, by your power again in Australia, in Asia, in the whole of Europe, in Africa, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, may your kingdom come over every ministry. Father, remove all error and be glorified. Let all the glory be given unto you for men and women of God who are weak, getting weary, getting tired, Father, we pray for them this morning. Visit them and quicken them, strengthen them. Let them hear your voice, showing them the way in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for our brother evangelist Adam. In the name of Jesus Christ, everything that he's doing in Pakistan, Lord, we pray that the people shall come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, even as the name of the ministries come to Jesus' ministries. And Lord, as we shall come together on Saturday, we pray, Lord, that many souls will come. For you said that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Father, as we come, we pray in the name of Jesus that you cause the increase to come. Let the sheaves come in. Let the souls come in, mighty God, in the name of Jesus. The program on Saturday, we commit it into your mighty hands. We pray that the instruments, the Zoom, Everything shall work perfectly. And Father, that the words will come out clear. Father, the translation will be clear. The original word will be original from you. Move by your spirit. Use us as oracles for your kingdom. You, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we shall decrease even as we decrease now that you might increase and rule over Pakistan, even over our brother Adam's ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen. And Pastor Chris, I know, you know, the 8th of March is my birthday, which is this Friday. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the 9th, I'll be speaking in Pakistan. So I pray right. that the people of God will remember me before God, even as I get into my next anniversary, my new year. Hallelujah. We thank God. And praise be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Um when I, I can I assume that when you say you'll be speaking on the eighth, it's not that you're gonna be be in Pakistan. Is this no, on I'm speaking on Zoom on the ninth. My birthday is on the eighth. Oh, you're on the ninth. Okay, praise be to God. All right. Hallelujah. We'll continue to lift you up. Heavenly Father, just thank you for Jenny. Um, the opportunities that are availing themselves. Uh, and Father, I just thank you that you are 
using that as an oracle of you, Father God, and as you do so, that your word continues to be confirmed through her with signs following. Father, miracles. Father, there is no distance in prayer. And we acknowledge, Father God, that you are anywhere and everywhere because you are almighty God. And so, Father, we decree and declare your sovereign will over that, those meetings right now. And we pray that truly you shall be glorified and you shall be lifted up and you will use your servants, Father God, to administer your grace so that people will be healed, set free and delivered, made whole and complete in you, but more so they will join the family of God and Father, great rejoicing will be had in heaven. Yes. So, yes. Father, we thank you for all your mercies. They are yea and amen and so be it. Father, we thank you for the deliverance of souls. Yes. In your yes. kingdom. Father, I thank you. We bless your holy name. Thank you for Adam, Father, even for the vision, Father God. And Father, I just pray that truly, it will be open heaven over everything he administers. Everything that you lay upon his heart will be established and you will do exceedingly, abundantly above that which he can even ask, think, imagine, dream, or even fathom according to the power of your Holy Spirit, the love in him that continues to work through him as he reaches out to the unreached and touches the untouched. Father, I thank you for great increase in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Father, amen. Bless you. Um, well, bless you. Thank you, each and every one of you. And uh, I trust that you have an empowered and impactful day. And that the, the seed that has been sown here this morning will continue to germinate in your lives and bring great increase, not only to you, but to many that you come into contact with. So shine, 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 for the glory of God to be manifested in and through you, in Jesus' name, amen. Have a great, 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 great day. And uh, we thank God for the many testimonies as we count those things that be not as though they are. We believe for the impossible, made possible, because with God, all things are possible. Amen. So Amen. I just want you to understand that and just get the revelation of that. All things are possible. Um, be a blessing. And that's what I would leave with you. Be a blessing. Have Amen. an ability to bring increase to other people's lives. Thank you, everyone. Thank you again, Jenny, for sharing this morning, ever faithful and uh, just a servant in the Lord. And just thank you for that word. It was a rhema word, God ordained in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, everybody. Bless you. And uh, trust that uh, you join us again tomorrow when we have someone else who will administer God's grace. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for the messages. Love you. God bless you. Praise be to God. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you, Jenny, again. Thank you, Grace, Rochelle, Donna, Mom, Seema, Adam, Shanique, Marcia, Fiona. Have a great day. Bye, everybody. God bless you. Thank you, Evangelist Jenny. Bless you. Thank you. Oh, so bless you all. Take care. Happy, 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 happy too. Thank Bye. you. Thank, Thank you, Evangelist Jenny. God bless. God Thank bless. you, Pastor Chris. Thank, Thank you. you. Pray for me. Keep praying for my birthday. God bless you. Yes. Thank you, Jenny. Um, I will speak to you. Okay. All right. Pastor. Oh, I don't, I don't, I, if I speak to you on your birthday, you might be overcome um, with. <laughs> <laughs> yes. anyway i'll speak to you bless you all yes. right okay bye everybody bye evangelist adam bye